Welcome to another network podcast. We're talking about money talk. My name is Mashuri Chipada. I'm your host today. There's also an audio book on money talk. So today I'm joined by a coach. Her name is Joyce Baloy. And she will enlighten us more through in terms of her journey in the finances. Welcome, Joyce. Thank you so much, Mashudu. Really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Well, my journey in terms of finance it started when I was a child. At home, my family was entrepreneurs. My dad was an entrepreneur. My mom was also an entrepreneur. Wow. So when I was growing up, my dad trusted me with funds. He always said, Joyce, I'm giving you the responsibility because you're not here and you are home. So when people come and buy, keep the money. I don't want you to say anything to me about the money. Keep it safe, but give me the money end of the week. Wow, so much trust, huh? <laughs> yes, definitely. And it brought courage and confidence in myself in terms of finances because then when I gave him the money and I recorded the incidents, how much was gained, when and how, he was happy about it and he gave me, you know, rewards for wow. the good work. Yeah, so that started my finance journey. Wow, you yes. were so blessed to have parents who actually tried to um, introduce you to the legacy that they had. So that's quite an interesting thing. Now, in your personal life, did you realize that, uh, did it make you realize that money is important? And how did that have an impact in your lifestyle, in your personal lifestyle? You know what? I was privileged. Where I grew up, life was easy because I never really wanted money until I started working for myself mm. and had my own job and home place. That's when the finances started to be a challenge because now nobody was showering me with the money. Wow. And now I had to manage responsibilities in terms of my own life, my family's life, and the house. You know, when you buy a house, people just tell you about the bond you're buying it. And then they don't tell you about the maintenance exactly. that they will have. have to, you take care yeah, of there's it. a lot yes. of things that I had to learn mm -hmm. the hard way. So that's why I felt it's important for us to talk about money matters because really without money, mm -hmm. life is so difficult. Wow, that's mm -hmm. quite interesting. I'm learning a lot already. Yes. Now, um, when you were growing up, did you actually realize that um, there, there must be passion and also there must be money that should be made in business? Or uh, are you actually realizing that everything must just be about money? Or you like to explain to us maybe if passion is also important into it? Thank you. For me, in terms of my own experiences, passion is the driver. When you follow your man, your money, then you don't have to work a one day because what you're doing is you're following your passion, you're doing what you love. Even when you work long hours, you don't even feel it because it is what you love oh, wow. and money comes because you give it your all and people can see the love when you do something with love it shows because there's that touch even if somebody else can do the same thing that you're doing people are attracted to you because there's love and even when you're saving people you serve them with love because you know and you're proud of your own production so you wow. don't have to want validation from anybody else wow wow yes. Is it something that you can teach to the high school students, maybe when during the career assessment psychometric test in terms of teaching them more about passion and making money in the business? Definitely, it is important for all people, especially those who want to be entrepreneurs. If you look at our current situation, there's a lot of people who are unemployed. And most of those people who are unemployed, they have passion and they have talent. But they're waiting for somebody else to just give them a job to do what they are actually good at. Oh, but if they can get courage and encouragement while they're still growing up, they will be free to think about what can I do about my gift? Can I start something even if it's small? Mm -hmm. And then who can I look up to? You know, we need to have role models. Wow. Yeah, so if you have people who you know who are doing what you love, and you know you can reach them, you just go and talk to the person that, you know what, I love what you're doing. Wow. I wonder how you're doing it. Can you teach me? Mm. Then it will be easy. 
So there's power in terms of and passion, in terms of what you love doing and it produces the right results. Yes. And you wake up very excited going to work. You don't just wake up because you have to go and make money. Yes, thank you. But there's a myth that if you're doing what you love, then you're not frustrated. Wow. You must always remember that in life there's good and bad. Mm. So there will be good days in terms of business, there will be bad days in terms of business. Mm. And that impacts on your money. How you handle your own money will determine whether you will sustain the business. Because there are terms and conditions in terms of you working. There will be times when you will have overflow, you will have money like nobody's business. And there will be dry spells also where you have nothing. So if it is the seasons where it's raining, you get money and you play with it. It's going to be drought and then now you're going to suffer. Then we'll see that, you know what, this passion is overrated. You don't get what you want. So my advice is that, you know, every season has its time. Mm. So if it's a rainy season, remember there's drought, there's winter coming. So make sure that you save some wow. and also use it to develop yourself. You will never know everything in your career. Wow. So wow. there might be other stuff that you can learn. So that you can improve yourself. Yeah. I hope the youngsters out there, they're getting the gist of where we are going with money and some advices from the coach herself. In terms of, can you share some examples with us where you had um, some challenges handling um, in your finances and also how, what did you do to actually overcome that circumstance? There are various challenges that I experienced. The first one is the one that I told you that when I started working, I was excited and I was affording my life. And then I started buying houses. I started buying this and that. And then that accumulated into a lot of money. Now I was looking for some other source. So having one kind of source of income is not enough. Because even if you can be paid, there's never going to be more money Enough. than what you yeah. can spend. So my idea and advice, it comes from you managing what you're using your money for. Yeah. For example, I used to have a lot of this, you know, clothing industry related accounts. Wow. Yeah, so if you have that, mm -hmm. they will always tell you there's nutrients coming in, you qualify for this, you qualify exactly. for that. And you are going to get robbed because you're going to go there and buy. Mm. But just remember, if you can't pay, it's affecting your credit record. And also, they don't care that they called you. They oh, need their right. money. Yeah. So you need to pay. So it's important for you to be able to see that, you know what, any account that you open, you are accountable for it. And you pay it on time so that your credit record can remain clean. Wow. Hi, this is Jess Baloy, a life and transition coach and a psychometrist from the Shohonolo Asia Consulting. Thank you for your support in the audiobook Money Talks. You know what? I got such a great response from you guys. The engagement, the queries and comments. We've decided to grant you a three-day course that will be running from the 26th to the 28th of May. And as most of our clients are working, we'll be running the sessions for two hours from 5 to 7 in the evenings. You are welcome to follow us on the Sohonolo HR Consulting and you will get the link below to register. The price for this is 1005 You are able to pay in two installments and there's an early bid where you will be paying 1.2 if you pay before the end of April. I hope we learning, all of us, in terms of um, balancing things out, in terms of handling our monies and being financially free. Um, just give an advice to those who are um, struggling uh, in terms of how to handle their finances. If you can just maybe tell us a little bit more in terms of how would you advise some kind of audiences, maybe who are going through um, some battles with handling their finances. Thank you, Mashuri. For me, each and everyone knows where they are. And it's easier to start where you are. There are people who are not struggling yet, but they are going to struggle if they don't change the ways. Mm -hmm. So if you are already struggling, just look at which account is really, really seriously putting you into stress. Because money doesn't only work in terms of talking. It does affect your health. If you are owing a lot of money, you don't know where you're going to get it 
you lose your sleep and then you start stressing, then you get sick. So you really need money. Wow. But if you can avoid some decisions that you can take that will give you a short-term pleasure but long-term stress, it will be easy. So you go and look at what is it that you own and how much of it are you owing. How much can you afford to really pay that? And you go and negotiate with the people that you are owing. For example, if you have a loan with the bank and you agree that you pay them 2000 because you wanted the money, but in reality you can only afford to pay a 1000 you go to the bank and you explain your situation that, guys, I want to pay you, but so far my finances are bad. I can't pay you 2000 Can I please what, pay 1000 It will be extra months to pay, to repay, but at least you won't be stressed. And then you push the little ones that are on your way. Maybe there's one that you can finish in two months or three months. Whatever the amount that you pay, you add into that one that you have reduced. And then I'm not saying you shouldn't eat, you shouldn't be having fun. I was about to ask yes. this, you know. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. We have this problem of saying we want to eat brands. Just because you grow up eating brand food doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do that if you can't afford. But that is what is happening currently. So exactly. don't you have to go with the flow? No, what? that's why you are in trouble. You go with the flow. You don't know where I get my money. You just assume you know. So true. So true. Yeah. So if you don't know, do not assume. Look at what you can control. You can control, you can buy everything that you buy in, but you don't have to buy oh. the quality that you wanted. Okay. You can look at options because there are brands, great brands, which are the the retail brands. They're doing mm -hmm. great food and they're more affordable. And there's these cards that they're giving these days. There's a lot of cards where you get... I saw that my wallet is so full. I cannot even close it. <laughs> yeah, but if you can't close your wallet yeah. and you're not using those oh, rewards the way you're supposed to, it doesn't help you. Yes. They will always give you a message that, you know, so many points are expiring by the end of this month. Oh, yes. Yeah, so if you don't take advantage of that, then you're losing it. You have the cards, but what do they help you with? But will the youth understand exactly what you're talking about? That's because why we have to make sure that our youth, we teach them how to handle money while they're still young. Yes, they will make mistakes. Yeah. But when they do, do not just crucify them. Just show them that son or daughter, this is real life. I'm not going to be always there for you. But if you do this continuously, you're not going to have a greater future in terms of finances. Like I'm saying... I'm a product of my dad teaching me responsibility in terms of money. Since then, even if I have money and I spend it on something that I feel it's useless, I do it knowingly. I just tell myself, okay, this one is a reward for myself for the hard work. Oh. So you don't have to be too hard on yourself. There will be times where you spend and when you reflect back, you'll be like, oh my goodness, did I really do that? It's good to forgive yourself and move on. Don't stay in a place where you have made a mistake. So most of you guys who have financial challenges, there were red flags even before you started with that account, but you went ahead anyway. So what then is done? What matters is moving forward. What are you going to do differently? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So. Awesome. Wow. I, for one, also have also learned a lot from this session, and I hope you audience as well out there, you can repeat this network podcast and just try to listen attentively and implement it accordingly so that we can be a better community and we can learn a lot well that in your money talks as well out there you'll save a lot of money and you'll live within your means and you will sustain the generation of your family not being in debt and i hope that um the the, the listeners will also visit the audiobook and listen again and again and again